hyperanalyze situations that most people wouldn't think twice about. My throat closes up and I start to have trouble breathing. It's like my entire body freezes and I feel like I can't move. Well, anxiety is a sort of the uh, when an individual feels overwhelmed by a number of stressors in their life, it produces physiological or emotional or even behavioral reactions. So anxiety might be manifested where somebody has a, hep, a rapid heart rate, or they may tremble, they may uh, forget things, they might have trouble sleeping, uh, they may forget um, to eat because of their anxious. So there are a lot of symptoms that are different from individual to individual. And so everybody's experiencing it a little bit different. My, my mental health issues really started back when I was younger, kind of like that, that weird puberty going into sixth grade middle school. I started to have a really hard time making friends and a really hard time uh, regulating my emotions. I was always stressed out about grades and everything and I tend to overthink those a lot and then when I got to Furman thing like obviously college is more difficult and there's a lot more stuff that goes into it and I got really stressed out to the point where I could barely focus on homework or relax. Somebody might experience higher anxiety during testing situations. Somebody might experience more anxiety in meeting new people or in public speaking. So everybody may respond differently to stressors and some may become more anxious than others. I have a really big issue with social anxiety in the sense that I um, I hype it up in my head. I hype up situations in my head and it's always focused on people perceiving me poorly. You know, you come up with those ideas of, oh, I should have said this, I should have said this. And there's been times where I've gone back and texted the person and said, hey, I handled this poorly, this is what I should have said. And of course, like, they don't care at that point, but I care and it's something that helps me. Well, some students may feel a pressure to graduate in four years because it's financially charging for them. Uh, they might experience the pressure to be competitive in their school, and as a result, they're worried about it. Or they may be exposed to situations that are new to them they didn't realize they would be worried about. Anxiety will build up over time and the more you're anxious, the more you just are impacted and you can't do things. Yes. Everything shuts off. I mean, I would skip classes, I would sit in my bed all day, I gained 20 pounds, shout out to anxiety, <laughs> um, but it was so hard to explain to people that I was missing class and sitting in my bed and not doing my assignments and developing a deep, deep, deep depression, all because I was so nervous about doing the assignment in the first place. But whenever you know. I mess up on something little, I can blow it out of proportion. And I've had to learn how to tell myself that that's fine. And that like, I'm as long as I'm doing my best, like that's okay. Well, I mean, college is just a pressure cooker for, for stress and you know, feeling homesick and not having that support system that you've grown up with. There's a lot of people who come into college not knowing that maybe they are a little bit more vulnerable to it. Cause you know, some of it they say is genetic and some of it they say is adaptive. Like it's, it's a product of your surroundings. I went to the counseling center and also went to therapy um, outside of the counseling center and I got myself uh, medication and talking with people. What we've seen in, across the country is similar because we're able to compare numbers to other institutions. And anxiety is probably the number one concern that students identify with. The second one has been depression and relationships tend to be the third. But the anxiety has seemed that within the last 10 years to really far more than depression. Uh, usually anxiety and depression were similar, but what we've seen in the last at least last 10 years anxiety to be the higher prevalence. I think that mental illness implies that there's something that's wrong, and wrong means bad. And so you kind of hear, especially with the stigma now today, that mental illness is really just a bad thing, and that's, that's not true. I'm not a bad person because I have a mental health issue. You know, it's 
we're so conditioned to believe in the stigma that, that mental health issues are your fault and you can think your way out of them and, oh, don't worry about that. Uh, we see 25% of our students, which is uh, a high number for institutions of our size. Um, general institutions across the country uh, may see 15, 12%. It's awesome that Fervent offers the Counseling Center because I think that it's a great point for people to go to. You know, maybe you're not feeling well and maybe you mention it to the infirmary. The infirmary will shoot you right over to the counseling center. Being able to know that something's not right and find someone who can help you with that, it, even if you've never experienced that before, is, is fantastic. Everybody has something going on. And it sounds very cliche, but really everybody does seem like they have things together. They're doing their classes, they're going to their extracurriculars, they're hanging out with their friends on the weekends. But you don't know about people's families up sometimes. You don't know about their relationships. You don't know what they think about before they go to bed. Everybody knows generally what anxiety feels like. If people are more accepting of people with mental health conditions and just view them as normal people, then we won't have to hide our conditions. Freak is the wrong word. I'm not, I'm not like alone in this. Getting help is a really, really big step. And for a lot of people, it might be the bravest thing they ever do in their life. <music>